We're on to uh, section 8, 7 of chapter 8, uh, trigonometric functions. Uh, and uh, this section is over the law of cosines. And just like the law of sines, what we're going to do is we're going to take trigonometric ratios and we're going to extend them, manipulate them with a non-right triangle, using a non-right triangle, and create uh, a law or properties that will allow us to use trigonometric functions uh, to solve and work with non-right triangles. Okay? Now, what we're going to do on this one, rather than proving this, because the proof is rather lengthy, I will have a section video that just says proof of the law of cosines, but I'm just going to show you what it is, and then we're going to explore it, do some sample problems, and be done with it. be pretty short. This law simply says, if I have a triangle and have side c squared equals a squared plus b squared, we're used to that, that's Pythagorean theorem. Now we're going to add this little piece, minus 2 times the side AB times the cosine of the angle opposite C. Alright? Just, you know, just sort of have to memorize this setup. You basically have Pythagorean theorem with this added on to it. These two right here is an adjustment for this, and then the cosine of this angle over here. Okay? And we could do it for another side, A equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of B. Okay? And that's what it is. Now let's look at this for a particular angle, and we're going to pick the right angle, or the 90 degrees, or where the measure of C equals 90 degrees. This right here. Law of cosines for a right triangle. Measure of angle C equals 90 degrees. Okay? Let's develop this. C squared equals, we're just copying this from right here, A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. Well, C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of 90 degrees. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB. Cosine of 90 is 0, I believe. Right? Then we have all this drops out over here. Why? Because all that's multiplied by that. It just drops away and we just have what? C squared equals A, B, A squared plus B squared. So if we use the law of cosines on a 90 degree angle, you have the Pythagorean theorem. Let's extend that concept, and basically we can extend that concept to say, oh wow, the law of cosines is really an adaptation or an add-on feature for function. This little section right here, this minus 2ac cosine of the angle opposite what we're looking for is an adjustment for non-right triangles. Okay? You get into math very much and you want to major in math, you want to do a lot of this, you'll figure this out and you'll actually begin to understand how that makes sense and comes about to be. Alright, but that's what we're looking at, law of cosines. Fairly straightforward, fairly simple. We're just going to use those equations. Now let's use the law of cosines to actually solve a triangle again, just like the law of sines. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to use the term solve a triangle to mean find all of its unknown parts. We're given this triangle ABC and we're going to solve it using the law of cosines. We're given that measure of angle A equals 60, C, C equals 8, and B equals 10. And we need to find, we need to find A. Okay? So, since we're going to try to find A, we're using this equation, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC, cosine of A, fill in the blanks, A squared equals 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2, 10, times 8, times the cosine of 60. All right, A squared equals 100 plus 64 times minus 2 times 10 times 8 times 0.5 is cosine of 60. So that is a squared equals 164 minus 80, or a squared equals 84, a equals square root of 84.
or 9.17 approximately. So we have not A equals 9.17. Okay? So we've solved that part. We still have two angles we don't know. All right? So, but, you know, now that we know what this side is, we can use law of sines, can't we? All right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the law of cosines to solve for one of those angles and um, go from there uh, to show you how we do that. Now we're going to use the law of cosines to actually solve for an angle. Well, we need to know angle B here, don't we? So let's set the equation up for that. Angle B across from angle B is B. So we're going to have B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of B. Let's fill it in. B is 10, so 10 squared equals 9.17 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 9.17 times 8 times the cosine of B. 100 equals 84 plus 64 minus 146.64 times the cosine of B. 100, let's take this on out, if you see it. Now, what do we do to get here? We're going to subtract 148 from both sides. Don't get hung up on the math. You're supposed to know how to manipulate these equations. So we did bring that over here. We get negative 48 equals negative 146.64 cosine of B. What are we going to do? How do we get rid of that and get cosine of B by itself? We're going to divide both sides by the negative 146.64. When we do that, we're going to get positive over here. So this equals the cosine of B. This is a positive 0.3273 equals the cosine of B. Flip that around. Cosine inverse of 0.3273 equals 70.89 degrees is the measure of angle B. That's how you would do it. A lot of manipulation of these equations. Your ability to manipulate these equations, move them around at will, and do it correctly is extremely important when you're doing, doing upper level math. You get to college, you are expected to be able to do this without a mistake. Think it in your head. If you're not able to, those professors, those classes, they're going to move on. You will be behind. They're talking concepts. You're going to be thinking math. You're not on the same wavelength. So this is how you'd use the uh, law of sine, cosines to actually get an angle.